Hello and welcome to Region Weather Live, your YouTube source for weather across the Dakotas and Minnesota. I am meteorologist Brad Warner. And we've got a lot to talk about. We've got snow, we've got wind, reduced visibility, slippery road conditions, and that Arctic air that's going to be moving into our region this weekend. So let's go on into it and take a look. And we're gonna look at the split screen and we've got our precipitation map here on the left and our temperatures on the right right now. And we're looking at noon on Thursday at this point and we've got this warm front moving eastward and along with it is going to be this band of snow and even maybe even a, a bit of rain and snow mixed in with this down in southwestern parts of North Dakota, northwest South Dakota at this point. And of course, behind the warm front, we've got temperatures that are going to be get above freezing. And you're going to see that a little bit better here in the next couple of time frames. But something else that I want to mention here, we're going to flip over to the wind gust here on the right screen. The wind gust that's going to be filling in behind the warm front. You're seeing already by noon gusts of 40 to 50 miles per hour out of the west northwest now by 3 p.m on thursday you can see that snow now has made its way mainly ahead of the warm front here we've got that uh, possibility at least of some rain or some rain snow mixed across the southern edge of that warm front and just out ahead of this we might just have a little bit heavier band of snow that's going to be making its way eastward that's going to reduce visibilities as that warm front continues to push eastward. Now also notice out ahead of the warm front is going to be the stronger southerly winds. We're starting to see these winds out ahead of this begin to pick up. So we're seeing wind gusts of 30, 35 miles per hour. So mind you, we have this band of snow in through here along with the southerly winds. So we're looking at reduced visibilities, making it into the James River Valley, Devil's Lake Basin by about 3 p.m. And so that could, uh, like I said, reduce visibilities and create some slippery road conditions. Now back behind the warm front, mind you, like I said, we still have the wind gusts of 40 to 50 miles per hour. And even as I switch the right screen over to the current temperatures, you can see those temperatures begin to make its way into the mid thirties for some of you. But with the freshly fallen snow and wind gusts that high, I would still expect at least some drifting to occur. Of course, if you have the temperatures warming up just a bit, that drifting is going to stick to the roadways. Now, not only that, but if you do have some rain mixed in with this, some of those road temperatures won't react quite as quick as the air temperatures is because we do have a little bit of fresh snow on the ground at this point. So some of that rain might also possibly stick to the roadway initially. So we have a lot of different factors going on here by 3 p.m. on Thursday that could uh, really make some slippery road conditions in the western parts of the Dakotas and then uh, picking up that snow and the wind out into the eastern parts of North Dakota in particular by this point and dipping into the southern portions of the James River Valley as well. And here on the right on the temperatures, you can see they continue, the warmer temperatures continue to push eastward, but we still have the strong west northwesterly winds gusting 40 to 50 miles per hour, and we're probably going to be seeing some light snow still on the back side of this uh, frontal boundary as well. And then once again, out ahead of this, guys, we're starting to see those winds pick up even more out of the south, again, through the southern James River Valley, in through the Red River Valley, where we're going to be seeing gusts of 35 to 40, maybe 45 miles per hour at this point. So for those of you particularly across the northern Red River Valley, right in through here, just keep this in mind as we get kind of that 5, 6, 7, and in through uh, the evening hours, that visibility is really are going to reduce in through here and... Uh, we're really going to have a problem uh, with the roads and visibility at this point. Now, by 9 p.m. on Thursday, that snow now making it into central portions of Minnesota, maybe just a little bit more of an intense band right in through here. We kind of continue to have the strongerly southerly winds as well. So uh, for the remainder of your kind of a western parts of Minnesota, also expecting uh, reduced visibilities and some uh, deteriorating road conditions as we get to that 9 p.m. time frame. And back behind it, continue still to have that 40 to 50 mile per hour winds. And here we go, folks. Midnight, that cold front now makes its way into northern parts of North Dakota. This is the one. This is the one that basically breaks the dam, as I said a few nights ago on my latest video 
that brings and ushers in all that cold air into the weekend and kind of just sits there for the remainder of next week. Uh, but out ahead of that, uh, we continue just to have some of the stronger west-northwest winds uh, ahead of the warm front that is now beginning to deteriorate a little bit. Uh, we continue to have the strong southerly winds as well as that snow now makes its way into eastern portions of Minnesota. So now by this midnight time frame, some of you right in through here, that's kind of where uh, the potential for uh, the reduced visibilities and those roads really slicking up quickly uh, will be by midnight Thursday night, early Friday morning. On the southern end, we continue to just have at least a chance of a rain-snow mix now into eastern portions of South Dakota. By 3 a.m., again, the light snow in eastern parts of Minnesota mainly, maybe a little bit lingering back in the northwest Minnesota, eastern portions of, of North Dakota as well. But look at the temperature side of things. You could just start to see this cold air sagging in. We've got teens being dragged in. And folks, it's just going to get colder as we go through the day on Friday. Here we are by 6 a.m. Now, most of the snow has pretty much left. We got just a little bit of light stuff left across the eastern portions of Minnesota. But again, here comes the cold air continuing to filter on down from the north. Pretty much we're looking at that warm front is, 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 is gone. It's non-existent and we're going to be getting rid of these temperatures that are above freezing for quite a while. And just jumping to noon on Friday now, by this point, the uh, snow has now moved out of the eastern portions of Minnesota. The cold front continues to sag southward. We've got a, maybe a little bit of snow now moving back into the western Dakotas. And notice those teens continue to slip just a little bit further south throughout the day. Now by 6 p.m. on Friday, that frontal boundary kind of stalls out here across southern portions of South Dakota. And at the same point, we've got an upper level disturbance that moves eastward, and that's going to be causing some snow to fall across southern portions of South Dakota throughout the night, Friday night, and into Saturday morning. Now, the good thing with this, as you can see on the wind gust map by 6 p.m., most of the gusts have pretty much died off. So we're going to be seeing some snow across the south, but at least we're not going to see the winds with it. And here we are, midnight Friday night, early Saturday morning, and that snow now into southeastern parts of South Dakota, with some snow now also into western portions of North Dakota as well. On the right, we've switched over to the snow accumulation, and basically this is from Thursday morning to now midnight, Friday night, early Saturday morning. You can see that snow starting to accumulate across the south. The remainder of this is really associated with that warm front that moves through Thursday into Thursday night. And we'll talk a little bit more about that accumulation after a bit, but uh, keep your eye focused on the south, because here we are Saturday morning at 6 a.m. and continued light snow across South Dakota, southern parts of Minnesota. We've got this bit of accumulation in through here. Now, notice it's probably just a little bit off the map at this point, but we do have a six inch mark far in the south. Now, some of these models are showing the higher accumulation to be just a bit further north than what this current model is showing. So keep that in mind that uh, with this snow Thursday night into Friday morning, there's the possibility at least of maybe picking up six inches of snow, maybe even a little more across far southern parts of South Dakota. So we'll have to keep an eye on that and see how that develops. Just keep that in mind as we go Friday night into saturday morning and here by noon on saturday we're just going to switch over to the full screen by this point but you see we've got the light snow continuing across southern portions of our area we've got this high pressure system in through here that's just going to be pushing in all this cold air into the north and into our region now by 6 p.m on saturday we continue to have this boundary just lingering on in through here and we've got another upper level disturbance that moves through and is going to be bringing just another little bit of light snow across southern portions of South Dakota by 6 p.m. on Saturday. And by midnight, some of that now moves into southeastern portions of South Dakota as well. And much of that will linger into Sunday morning at 6 a.m. But again, most of this is going to be very light, so not a whole lot more is going to be picked up off of this as we go through Saturday night and into Sunday morning. And we'll just take a quick look at the potential snowfall according at least to the short range model that we've got. And I did mention this area down in the south here. Also notice you areas down in the higher elevations, the Black Hills, 
we're really looking at quite a bit more snow potential for those of you uh, down in that region to where we're talking, you know, over another 10 to 15 inches of snow, possibly even more. Now, when we're looking at the remainder of this region, the snow that basically comes through Thursday into Friday, generally, generally a one to two inch mark for most areas. Now, you might see a few areas across the north that'll pick up two to three inches of snow with this. I know some of these areas are predicting maybe just a little bit more, but I think that's probably going to be on the high end. Again, generally one to two inches width, maybe pockets of two to three up across the northern portions of our viewing area. All right, let's go into the forecast of temperatures. Here we have highs for Thursday, and you can see teens out in the east and as that warm frontal boundary continues to push to the east we've got highs in the 30s maybe some 40s down into southwestern parts of south dakota so temperatures will warm up but even though we're still going to have those strong west northwesterly winds that probably will uh, create at least some drifting and some of that snow uh, will stick to the roadways now here we are we're looking at friday's highs and actually most of these, a good portion of these, particularly across the north, will occur early in the day as we're expecting these temperatures to plummet throughout the day on Friday as cold air continues to push in. And so we look at the lows Saturday morning. Oh, here we are, folks. Minus 20s across the northern valley. We've got single digits to teens down in the southwest, but those are going to be a chilly start to the day of Saturday morning. And of course, those daytime highs not really recuperating a whole lot on Saturday where we're going to be looking at high temperatures, single digits below zero for much of the area, teens down in the southwest. Sunday morning lows, pretty much everybody below zero, minus 19 to minus 20 across the north. We're going to be seeing wind shields, even though the winds are going to be rather light, just a little bit of breeze helps or doesn't help depending on your perspective. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, minus 30 to 35 wind chills by Sunday morning. Sunday's highs, again, not reaching above zero for many areas across there uh, with some teens and single digits uh, for the remainder of our region. Monday morning lows. Now, this is just the temperature. This is not wind chilled, folks. This is minus 20, 25, below zero across the north so we're going to be looking at wind chills as low as 35 to 45 below for much of you across the far north of course daytime highs on monday not many areas getting above zero morning lows on tuesday again minus teens minus 20s where we're looking once again at wind chills of minus 35 to 40 and your daytime highs for tuesday oh man look at this some of you might actually get above freezing for some of you guys up in the north. And we're looking at teens down in the southwest. But wow, what a warm up for Tuesday. Watch out, we've got a heat wave coming. And so one thing I want to reiterate is the snow and the blowing snow Thursday afternoon into Thursday evening, particularly across the northern Red River Valley, because we're going to be having a fairly decent band of snow moving eastward we're going to have some strong southerly winds associated with that so that's going to reduce the visibility within that region through those evening hours around uh, if we get to five in between that five to ten p.m time frame uh, those winds are going to be picking up the snow is going to be picking up so just keep that in mind as we get into thursday evening across red river valley and then we're looking at slippery conditions across the remainder of much of north dakota just because we've got some strong uh, west northwesterly winds and that's probably going to be creating at least some drifting and some sticking to the roadway so thursday's not looking real great with this system that moves through got the cold air that filters in behind it and so friday that's when that arctic air really begins to sag in and we are going to be set into next week for that cold weather to continue not much snow but that cold weather will continue into much of next week so if you want more updates make sure you subscribe below if you haven't done so already uh, hit the like button hit the thumbs up button as well that helps this channel 
get noticed by other people, please share. Uh, that also helps as well. And if a larger system does develop down the road, doesn't look like it's really going to happen in the near term, but if a larger winter storm does develop, I'll make sure to be on live as well. And of course, like I said before, I don't know, I'm just getting excited for severe weather season. So I, I'm just trying to trying to focus and not think about all this cold weather. I'm thinking about warm weather and severe weather. So uh, if you're interested in that as well, I will be on live for severe weather as well. So make sure you, you subscribe, hit the bell button, uh, hit the like button down below. That helps me out and helps the channel get noticed, like I already said. So I'm just rambling here, folks. I think I should just sign off. All right. So for Region Weather Live, I am meteorologist Brad Warner, and everybody have a good day.